Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, concerned you might be missing some important tax deductions? We know who can help you. Plus, ladies meet for tea at the Torrance Historical Museum. We'll tell you why. Then Torrance Memorial Medical Center receives an award for their dedication to educating the community on healthier food choices. And we'll take you to Wood Elementary School, where local students are busy creating Valentine's Day cards. We'll tell you who they're for. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. President Barack Obama delivered his fourth State of the Union address this week, focusing on a number of hot-button issues. His 60-minute speech focused on not only the state of the country's economy, but on issues of gun control, immigration, education, and even the role of government. For job creation, the president announced the launch of three more manufacturing hubs where businesses will partner with the departments of defense and energy to turn regions left behind by globalization into global centers of high-tech jobs. He hopes Congress will create a network of these hubs to help guarantee the next revolution of manufacturing is made in America. Over the next year, another 34,000 American troops will come home from Afghanistan. As the drawdown continues, President Obama indicates that our war in Afghanistan will be over by the end of next year. The president said that nothing he is proposing during the address should increase our deficit by a single dime. He went on to say it is not bigger government we need, but a smarter government that sets priorities and invests in broad-based growth. Bipartisan groups in both chambers are working to draft a comprehensive immigration reform bill in the next few months that he looks forward to signing right away. Senators of both parties are working together on tough new laws to prevent anyone from buying guns for resale to criminals. In an effort to make sure what no one who, uh, that no one who works full-time should have to live in poverty, the president is asking that the federal minimum wage is increased to $9 an hour. President Obama covered many more issues in his annual speech, which gives the opportunity to address Congress and the nation about how we're doing as a country and what his particular agenda will be for the coming year. The speech in its entirety can be seen on whitehouse.gov. Pope Benedict XVI is making history this week, announcing plans to resign on February 28th, becoming the first pontiff in 600 years to leave his post. He stated that he lacks the strength to fulfill his duties. The 85-year-old pope made the announcement during a meeting of Vatican cardinals and made it clear in the past that he would step down if he became too old or unable to do the job. The move allows the Vatican to hold a conclave before Easter to elect a new pope, since the traditional mourning time that would follow the death of a pope doesn't happen to be observed. Now there is no, currently no front runner to take his place, but there are several contenders that Benedict will hold great influence in on choosing his successor. Next month marks the start of a three-month-long project to widen the west side of Maple Avenue to create a southbound right turn lane onto Sepulveda. This includes resurfacing several hundred feet of the street and upgrading the traffic signal as well. Nearby Madrona Marsh Nature Preserve will not be affected according to officials and there will be very minor delays when heading southbound on Maple towards Sepulveda due to a lane closure. Funding for the project comes from Measure R, which is the half-cent sales tax increase approved by county voters in 2008. Thanks to the measure, South Bay cities will receive about $900 million over 30 years for road improvements. A Torrance tradition was a great success once again at this year's Rose Float Parade thanks to the city's help. Council recently approved a $17,500 funding gap for the city's 2013 Rose Parade Float. The Torrance Rose Float Association reported that it came up short in its fundraising efforts, but the city was able to come through for them as it had previously pledged to plug any gap. Now this was part Due to the city withdrawing its traditional financial commitment for the float last year because of budgetary constraints, the association is still working towards securing sponsors for next year's float and must do so soon if the city is to have a 60th Rose Parade entry. Now, if you would like to help, all donations are tax deductible. For more information and donations can be made through their website at torrencerosefloat.com. The City of Torrance announced the new topic for its 2013 Students and Government Day, which is a program to encourage youth to participate in community affairs. 
All 8th graders who wish to apply need to submit a 100 to 150 word essay on the prompt. The United States Congress is responsible for creating laws at the federal level, while Torrance City Council is responsible for creating laws at the city level. Describe one law that you think Torrance City Council should create and how it would improve the city of Torrance and benefit citizens who live here. Selected students will participate in Students and Government Day, which will be held on Tuesday, May 7th. Activities include shadowing the mayor, council members, and executive staff in their jobs, then act in those roles they shadowed. You need to hurry, though, as the deadline is Tuesday, February 19th. For more information, please contact the city manager's office at 310-618-5880. Attention high school seniors, is there a Vietnam veteran in your life? If so, you have a chance at a $1,000 scholarship for college or technical school. The Vietnam Veterans of America South Bay Chapter 53 will consider awarding scholarships to seniors from local area high schools. Now, to be eligible, students must report on a Vietnam-era veteran who served in the U.S. Armed Forces on active duty in the Republic of Vietnam between February 28, 1961 to May 7, 1975, or in any duty location between August 5, 1964 and May 7, 1975. Now, you must be a family member of the veteran or have been significantly influenced by them. Essays need to be 500 words or more, including a brief biography of the veteran and contain at least one topic from a provided list. For details, call 310-539-5542 or email scholarships at vva 53 Org. Be sure to hurry as entries must be received before 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, April 7th. The huge snowstorm known as Nemo didn't just affect the East Coast. LAX had to cancel and delay dozens of flights arriving and departing to Boston, New York City, and Newark. One report stated 63 flights were grounded here in Los Angeles recently due to the historic levels of snow. Now that the storm is over, things are getting back to normal. Too bad we can't share some of the great weather we have out here to help them thaw out. Well, coming up, a tea party you won't want to miss put on by the Torrance Historical Society and Museum. And it's getting close to that time of year for turning in your taxes. We'll speak with someone who can help with your preparations. You're looking at the number one cause of lung cancer. That's why the Surgeon General issued this warning. Now you're looking at the number one cause of lung cancer for non-smokers. That's why the Surgeon General issued this warning. Radon is an invisible radioactive gas that seeps inside your home from underground. Whether you smoke or not, radon can cause lung cancer. Protect your family. Have your home tested. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON. Radon problems can be fixed. We are this close. We're this close. We are this close. Of our mountain tea. To making history. This close to changing the world. We are this close. this close, this close, to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease ever again. This close. We are this close to ending polio. To ending polio. All we need is you. Is you. This close. If we don't act now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org. If you want to increase your tax refund check this year, you may want to consider adding these deductions. Our reporter, Brittany Benn, has more. On the story. Robert D. Workin and Stuart Levy are veteran certified public accountants. They've been advising clients in the South Bay for more than 42 years, and with tax day slowly approaching, they shared some inside knowledge with us explaining three of the most commonly overlooked tax deductions. Job hunting costs, resumes, travel are all deductible as miscellaneous itemized deductions. Uh, miscellaneous itemized deductions have a floor of 2% of your adjusted gross income. So if your adjusted gross income is $100,000, your first $2,000 are not deductible. But they go along with union dues, um, uh, unreimbursed employee expenses. Job hunting costs like moving expenses and employment agency fees are among the top overlooked deductibles. And if you're one of the 10% of Americans working from home, consider the associated costs like electricity fees and home office repair. Well, one of the things is uh, if, if you work out of your house, a home and office deduction, uh, if you have your own business, if, even if your employer uses you, it lets you operate out of your home, you could get a deduction that way. Uh, that, that's something that a lot of people miss. Donating to charity is a well-known tax break, but if you're an active volunteer, consider this third tip. 
uh, if you regularly volunteer for the PTA and you're driving all over town, uh, that mileage is deductible. It's only 14 cents a mile, but it's deductible. If you are volunteering for, as a soccer referee, for example, you got to buy a uniform, you got to take training, all those costs are deductible. In addition to the possible deductions mentioned, several South Bay cities, including Torrance, will be offering free tax aid to seniors and people with low to moderate incomes. The AARP tax site in Torrance is located in the Delamo Fashion Center. They'll be open every day until April 15th, handling straightforward returns using electronic filing. Your tax refund depends largely on your expenses, but tax professionals like Dee Workin and Levy can help you sift through the over 300 possible deductions to see which ones work best for you. There's a lot of credits in there, child credits, child care credits, um, and so seeing a professional, we kind of know what those things are, and we might be able to identify them for you. Tax season is well underway for Levy and Dee Workin, and getting an early start can actually help boost your return. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Brittany Bin. The AARP Tax Aid Program is estimated to serve more than 2,000 individuals just in the South Bay alone. For more information, please visit AARP.com. The Torrance Memorial Medical Center's Healthy Ever After School-Based Nutritional Education Program has received an honorary service award from the Torrance Council of PTAs. City Cable 3 was there to capture the event. The Healthy Ever After program is a five-lesson nutrition education program that is in Torrance Unified School District where personnel from Torrance Memorial have designed classes that we then teach parent docents how to present to the students in the classroom. So we're basically training the trainer how to um, teach the nutrition lessons and they take it into the schools. There are currently 10 Torrance Unified Schools participating in Healthy Ever After, and more than 5,700 students have gone through the program. Emily Parker and Helene Lopez accepted the award from the Council of PTAs and hope that kids are able to learn an important lesson from the program. Eat more color from nature. Eat foods that are closer to nature's source and enjoy your food. Have fun but uh, don't go overboard on those extras. So basically think of healthy eating as a lifestyle and uh, try new foods, experiment, um, enjoy fruits and vegetables especially. I think it's safe to say that's good eating advice for everyone. The Torrance Historical Society and Museum recently hosted a Valentine's Day Tea Party fundraiser. Our reporter Brittany Benn has more on the story. The Torrance Historical Society and Museum recently hosted a sold-out tea party for over 76 guests. During the Tea at Two event, attendees dressed in tea attire to enjoy an afternoon of sweets and history, as told by historian Maureen O'Donnell. By the 1880s, the 4 o'clock tea, afternoon tea, had worked itself into an art form, a ritual, and ladies were ordering tea gowns that were worn only at four in the afternoon when tea was served. Participants sipped on a variety of teas with each teapot on loan from the private collection of Jamie Watson. According to Watson, her collection of over 100 teapots is more than just glassware. The teapots for me represent different places. I have tea glass glasses from Rocco. I have a teapot like an Ishnik tile from Turkey. When I look at them, it brings back to me the places, the connections, the people, the customs. While attendees could not buy the teapots on display, they could purchase a variety of vintage linens on sale, supplied by Janet Stancliffe. I started out collecting vintage linens when I was a little girl. Um, I also embroider and crochet and do all of that handiwork, so I value it and I couldn't bear to see it all go into a scrap pile, so I started saving it. And when it got to the point that I had too much, I, I realized I had to start selling it. So it's hard to sell it, but I do. Drinking tea is an emotional experience. It's the thing you drink to celebrate happy times. And drinking tea to fundraise and celebrate Valentine's Day is a joyful time indeed. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Brittany Benn. Thanks, Brittany. The event raised more than $1,500 that will directly benefit the museum. For more information about the Torrance Historical Society and Museum, visit their website at torrancehistoricalsociety.com. 
Coming up after the break, we'll show you how some third graders are supporting veterans this Valentine's Day. You won't want to miss it. There are thousands of dogs and cats housed in shelters that need your help. Local shelter professionals and volunteers give their heart and soul to help unwanted animals and deserve your support. Americans give millions every year to national animal organizations. But unless you give to your local shelter, you can't be sure that money will make it to the pets that need it most. Adopt, volunteer, and give to your local animal shelter. To find your local shelter, go to humaneforpets.org. Because my parents told me I have to be responsible. Because my first coach told me, you can do this. Because my boss showed me how to do a good job. Because my teacher helped me see the choices. I'm swimming faster than I ever dreamed. I am a valuable employee. I discovered that I could work as an artist. I will be whatever I want to be. Youth with disabilities should grow up expecting to work and succeed. For more information, visit whatcanyoudocampaign.org. El Camino College is sponsoring a variety of events throughout February in celebration of Black History Month. All of their events are free and open to the public. The opening exhibit called 50 Years, The Dream Continues, begins Friday, February 15th in the library. Other events include a screening and discussion of the movie 41st and Central, The Untold Story of the Black Panthers. A presentation by the Emerge Group artist, Cecil Murray will give the presentation, The Legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, and much more. Festivities conclude with a Taste of Soul Festival on the 28th. For more information, you can call 310-660-3593, and a complete list of events can be seen on their website, elcamino.edu. Many may not know it, but the space shuttles were conceived, designed, built, and tested right here in Southern California. And when they were retired, there was some concern that none of them would make it back here. But thanks to the California Science Center, we now have one. Space Shuttle Endeavor is on display for the public to enjoy. And now closer to home, the Western Museum of Flight in Torrance will be holding a celebrity lecture series featuring Dr. Ken Phillips. As a curator for the aerospace science since 1990, Dr. Phillips was integral in bringing the Endeavor back to California. He will be sharing the history of the space shuttle program as well as the California Science Center's plan for the new Samuel Ocean Air and Space Center opening in 2017. The lecture will be this Saturday, February 16th at 11 a.m. and they have a number of upcoming lectures in case you missed this one. For more information, contact the Western Museum of Flight at 310-326-9544. Now let's go out to the sports desk where Juan Hernandez has a preview of what's to come. Juan, what do you have for us? Hello and thanks for checking in. This week on the sports desk, we've watched one West High athlete dominate in wrestling and in football. We're going to show you which major football program he's headed to next year. And over at South High, they had quite a busy winter. Multiple teams headed to the CIF playoffs, keeping things real crazy on the Spartans campus while the rest of the South Bay gears up for winter playoffs. If you want to catch it all, you can see us every day at 4 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. right here on City Cable 3. Thanks, Juan. The holiday known for romance is here, and so are the red roses and chocolates. According to various sources, Valentine's Day on average sells more than $110 million in roses, more than 35 million heart-shaped boxes, and about $1 billion, that's right, $1 billion Valentine's Day cards exchanged each year. Now third graders at local elementary school at a local elementary school made their special contribution to those Valentine's Day's numbers with a special project in their classroom. Shannon Murphy has that story. Third grade students from Howard Wood Elementary School are making as many Valentine's Day cards as they can to help support veterans. The event is called Valentine's for Vets and is sponsored by the Balfour Beatty Construction Company. Students were hard at work and having fun making the cards under the supervision of their teacher, Lori Perez. I've got creative kids and they always love to do something to help other people. Diana Garcia and Ben King of Balfour Beatty Construction were there to pick up the cards. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for these. Next Tuesday we're going to deliver all of these cards that you've made and a bunch of little goodies to them to the Long Beach Veterans Hospital in Long Beach and um, I'll make sure that I say Wood Elementary students made these for you guys, okay? Thank you so very, very much. The students were happy to do what they can for the veterans and wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day.
Thanks, Shannon. Looks like the veterans are going to get a lot of great cards. They are so cute, aren't they? Yes, indeed they are. Well, that's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McKay. And I'm Jin Chun. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.